Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you uh, for Fanero uh, Diaspora Prayer Line. We want to thank you for the work that you have enabled them to have. We want to thank you for this sweet fellowship that I have enjoyed. I am elated to hear how they have grown through this uh, platform. I've heard how uh, much fellowship has been built within and how you've raised great gifts uh, in this period. I cannot thank you enough for the work that you are doing in each of these individual lives and I'm quite certain that this is but the beginning of many great days and many great things that are going to come. I celebrate you, O oh God, for the things that you're doing through us. I thank you, O oh God, for the testimonies that I've heard that we continue to hear on this platform. I thank you because for some in different nations, this is the only wall of sanity. It's the only platform that reconciles many things for them. It's the only world they know that they can come for comfort, for instruction, for strengthening, for upholding, and many other things you have done through this platform. And this, I believe, shall become bigger and bigger as this spirit continues to catch and catch uh, the, the, everyone that shall uh, be connected uh, to this platform. In the name of Jesus, I celebrate you. And I thank you, O oh God, for what you're going to do and what you're going to say to us this afternoon. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed and believed. Amen. Good afternoon, uh, all of you who are listening. Again, like I said, I want to thank all your leaders, all the people from different nations that have been tuning into this prayer line for all the time that you have and, and, and have enjoyed the sweet fellowship and, and spaces of prayer. And again, like I said, I've had many of you that have been raised through this and that you continue to be raised uh, through this. And so when I was told that this platform is celebrating four years, I was so, so excited. And of course, I'm going to say a lot of things that I pray that by the grace of God, your spirits will import and, and, and store for quite a long time in this fourth year. The Christians easily can teach, Christians can easily sing, Christians can easily, you know, worship in church, Christians can easily attend, you know, worship uh, moments. But one of the most complicated things for Christians is prayer, unfortunately. And I know that it's not just a group issue. We could just, you know, characterize the whole Christ and don't with that. But I believe that a big number of Christians are struggling. They are struggling uh, in prayer. And because they are struggling in prayer, it's not an easy thing to maintain a prayer line. It's not a simple thing to maintain a platform of prayer. And uh, I celebrate that. I always tell people. And I, in fact, yesterday I found myself in a conversation um, with a young man that uh, there are many things that are easy, but one of the most complicated things is to have a discipline in your life of prayer and relationship with God. And one of the most cardinal disciplines of the faith is a life of prayer. Uh, because prayer is relational, it's not routine. Prayer is relational, it's not uh, it's simply a mandate. It, it has to begin from a place of relationship. And uh, it's one thing to have a relationship when you're not communicating with your God. It's, it's, it's one thing to have a relationship when you don't have, you know, a, a talking relationship or that you cannot come together with believers and join a space of prayer. Altars are some of the most powerful pillars that have not only defined generations but have defined institutions have defined schools of thought, have defined ideas, have defined inventions, have defined innovations, uh, have defined destinies, have defined generations, have defined families. They are all in the realm of prayer. This indeed is our Kairos moment that God has ordained for us and, and, and I intended to share quite a lot. Uh, and this is how I'm going to start. Years ago, many, many years ago, when the Lord 
uh, was placing this responsibility of ministry on my life. Um, there was one thing that for me revolutionized the way I saw life and ministry. And uh, we all read Romans where it says that all things work together for good for them that love the Lord and accord according to his purposes. That's Romans uh, 8, 28. And we know, we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord or God and to them who are called according to his purposes. That uh, was a very defining scripture for me because in the literal sense of definition, that scripture literally means the things that are visible, the things that are invisible, the things that are inert, the things that are physical, the things that are inward, the things that are outward, the things that are established by conditioning, the things that are not established by conditioning. He says, all these things work together for good to them that love God, that's number one, but two, that are called according to his purpose, okay, or his purpose. And uh, for me, it was a very defining revelation. I have shared this once, but uh, tonight I want to go a bit deeper into sharing some things in, in, in this line and more things do I intend to share, uh, touching the things that I want to tell you. It's um, one thing to be gifted. It's one thing to be gifted in, in song. It's one thing to be gifted uh, in um, business. It's one thing to be gifted as a teacher. It's one thing to be gifted in the prophetic. And the Bible says that the giftings and callings of God are without repentance. They are without repentance. And gifts are some of the most confusing things uh, on men because this generation so much validates the gifting on men and not the relationship on men because we tend to think that the gift validates or confirms the relationship. Uh, but if you are a reader of the Bible for years, you have seen uh, that there were many people who stayed in offices and gifts, but they were not functioning in relationship with God. Uh, the man of Ecclesiastes had a gift of wisdom, as we all know it, and uh, the Bible says he amassed wisdom, he amassed wealth, uh, like knocking had never mastered before, he collected himself uh, handmaids, uh, he acquainted himself with alcohol. Uh, but what was he seeking for? The Bible says he was seeking to know what is that thing that, you know, encourages, that thing that uh, defines, that thing that brings um, good to the sons of men under the earth. What is that thing that yeah, they should do all their lives? What is that thing that uh, you know, I, I, if I can read for you in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, said, I said in my heart that I will prove to be uh, therefore to enjoy pleasure and behold this also. He says that was vanity. I said of laughter, it was mad of mirth. What by this? I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting my own heart with wisdom and to lay hold of folly till I might feel that which was good uh, for the sons of men which they should do under the heavens. Uh, all the days of their lives, he said, I made me great works, I builded me houses, I planted me vineyards, I made me gardens and orchards, and I planted trees of them in all kinds and fruits. I made me pools of water to water their all with the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maiden servants born in my house. I had great possessions of great and small cattle. I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and provinces. I got me men singers, women singers, and the lights of sons of men, musical instruments. He says, I was great and I increased all the more uh, than those that were before me in Jerusalem. And he says, and also my wisdom remained with me. But even with that wisdom, whatsoever his eyes desired, the Bible says, he kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy. I rejoiced with my labors, and this was my portion. And he said, and I looked at all the work that my hands had wrought and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. There was no profit under the sun. He had women, he had wives, he drank alcohol, he made all the kinds of wisdom, trying to seek for a joy that he could not find in the third verse, Ecclesiastes chapter 2. They say, I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, uh, yet uh, acquainting mine heart with wisdom and to lay hold of folly, till I might see what uh, was that good for the sons of men which they should do under the heaven all the days of their lives. 
He said in the fourth verse, I made me great works and I built me houses. I planted me vineyards and I made gardens and orchards and I planted trees and them of all kinds of fruits. I made me pools of water there with the wood that brings its forth trees. I got me servants and maiden servants. I also had great possessions and cattle and all these things. I gathered me seals and gold, the peculiar treasure of kings, of provinces. I got me singers, women singers, the delights of sons of men as musical instruments. And he says that I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. And he says, but he says, but also my wisdom remained with me. And that whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labors, and this was my portion of all labor. And then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labors that had labored to do. And behold, he says, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. There was no profit under the sun. Okay? Now, this is a man of wisdom. The Bible says, and my wisdom also was with me. Okay? He's saying, my wisdom also was with me. He drank wine trying to discover, but his wisdom also was with him. He amassed wealth thinking that with that he will have joy and happiness, but his wisdom was also with him. He made wealth and, and got servants and, and, and all kinds of musical uh, instruments in the world because he thought that these were the things to bring him joy and comfort and laughter. And he discovers all these things were folly, but yet his wisdom, the Bible says, was still with him. Okay, so sometimes you'll ask yourself the question of, so where was his wisdom when he was trying to do all of these things and thinking that he was going to find joy and, and laughter and satisfaction and beauty and, 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 and where was his wisdom? It was with him, but it was with him as a gift. It was with him, that wisdom was with him as a gift. Okay, so we see that Solomon, he, he, that wisdom was with him as a gift. He wasn't with him aligned to the will and purposes of, 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 of his assignment and calling uh, and, 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 and the intentions for which God had for him as a man. And in all that wisdom, he could not realize that everything he was doing was all vanity of, of spirit and vexation. Okay, it was all vanity uh, and, and, and vexation of spirit. So, I'm trying to tell us that there is a very clear difference between the giftings of the spirit and the maturation into the purposes of God. So when Romans 8.28 tells you that we know that all things work for good to them that love the Lord and accord according to his purposes. For me the most revealing part of this was that I discovered the power of purpose. I discovered the power of assignment. I discovered the power of understanding why you are on the earth and what you are called to do on the earth. Why are you here and what are you here for? There are people who are going to live their lives and come to the end of it without understanding or having even the slightest glimpse of why they are alive, of why they are on the earth, of why they are born again, of why they are servants of God, of why they are ministers of the gospel, of why they are in the nation that they are in, of why they are with the families that they have, of why they are doing the jobs that they are doing, of why they are married to the spouses that they are married to, of why they are, they, are, they are raising children, the kind of children that they have, of why they went to the school they went to, of why they went through the hardships and the, the trials, the testations and things that frustrated their lives, of why they are living where they are now, of why they are planning the things that they are planning. They are just blown by the wind of life and they find themselves in different spaces, in different seasons. And I read it Ecclesiastes chapter 2 to help us understand that this was a man trying to discover himself through drinking alcohol, amassing wealth, doing everything there is to do in the earth because he thought that with doing that he was going to find the self. He was going to find meaning, he was going to find joy, he was going to find satisfaction, he was going to find the interpretation of life. And all of this is happening, yet this man has a gift. The gift of wisdom is there, but the wisdom even given to him by God as a gift cannot answer the questions of divine purpose. They cannot answer the questions of assignment. They cannot answer uh, the questions of, 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 of the meaning of his life and existence because this goes beyond the gifting. Whether you're talking of the gifting of wisdom, whether you're talking of the gifting of revelation, whether you're talking of the gifting of healing, whether you're talking of the gifting of the teacher, whether you're talking of the gifting of the prophet, whether you're talking of the gifting of whichever you are as a pastor, the place 
in us that finds purpose is bigger than the gifting of the hour. And yet, like I said earlier, we are living in a time where men justify our relationships with God, the purposes and assignments of God upon our lives based on the gifting uh, of the Spirit. And, and that's why I said they are very deceptive, they are very uh, delusional. I'm not saying that I'm against them all, that they have a problem in their own, but they are incomplete if they are not reconciled with a bigger picture. If by wisdom a man, by divine uh, purpose, a man cannot zoom out to get the bigger picture of why these, 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 these gifts uh, come into our lives. So, when I understood Romans 8, 28, how that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and accord according to his purposes. And many people, uh, like I mentioned earlier, who don't, take time to really study why am I here, what is the meaning of my life, why am I doing the job that I'm doing now, why am I in this nation, why did I migrate to this nation, why am I married to this man or woman, why am I raising these kinds of children, why am I in this country at this particular point, some of you are out of the country, not even your own doing, COVID came through and sort of changed. Uh, your plans, but some of you don't ask yourself why uh, am I? Why am I in this place? Why am I being now? Some of you are sons of, of of slaves, you know. Some of you are generations of people that you know left Italy long ago and went in one place, left uh, you know uh, Ireland in one place and went to another. You are the result, which regardless of how you're here, the point is that you are here. And that one of the most defining places for that believer is the day finally God opens your eyes to your true purpose. That purpose, that assignment that transcends the victims, the provisions, the, 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 the talents, the, 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 the human wisdom of your life, the, the competences that you've earned over the years, the degrees, the PhDs that you have, and, 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 and you find yourself in one place with that God. Uh, that wants to define you based on the purpose and the mind that you had in your life before you were formed in your mother's womb. The Bible says before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I called you uh, uh, to be a prophet in the nation. This was a man who was knitted with instruction from his mother's womb and he did not have a clue when he was born that this was a destiny that God had ordained him for. And now, like many of us, or all of us, he has to discover himself through the wheels of time and experience to know who he is and what he was called to do. And like I said, sadly, some live that life to, the, to, to their death without discovering, without understanding why uh, they, were, they are on the earth, why they were created on the earth, why uh, they are who they are and what God has called and put in their in insight uh, for the world. And then I always say and emphasize that God rewards faithfulness, you know, above gift, above talent, above, above anything that you could ever have, because what are we really faithful to? We're faithful to that purpose. We are faithful to that calling. We are faithful to that assignment. We are faithful to that course. If you never find that course, if you never find that assignment, if you never find that instruction which you were sealed before you were formed, you will never leave anything in this world. You will never carry meaning. And some of you are frustrated not because really you have financial challenges like you want to think or that you have marital issues like you want to think or that you have uh, you know, challenges in ministry uh, like you think or you have challenges in, 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 in children like you think. But really your bigger challenge, your bigger problem is is, is purpose. Your bigger problem is assignment. You have not found yourself in that space. And so how will all things work together for good when they don't have an assignment to work with, a purpose to work with, uh, but also a man who loves God? But you see, again, I emphasize this too because in there I want to define the discipline. All things are working together for good because we love the Lord but two, we are called according to his purposes. And there is no expression of love that is as defining as our places of prayer, our places of fellowship. Okay? Because 
your life of prayer, your life of fellowship is what connects to your discovery of assignment and this is when all things now start to work together for good. This is when all things start to connect and get in the order that they must get into because you love the Lord and you are called according to his purposes. Now let us define these spaces of loving the Lord. It takes us to the place of prayer where we are not praying again, like I said from the beginning, from a place of routine, from a place of I must pray because I, I have to pray. There are many reasons why believers pray. Some believers pray because they were told that to be a good Christian, you have to be a praying person. Well, I give that to you, but that is not supposed to be the sole, the primary reason why you pray. That is a result of prayer. Some people pray because they have problems, challenges. In fact, the biggest number of people in prayer uh, realms are people who are asking, people who are stuck, people who are frustrated, people who are lacking, people who are dealing with a sickness. You have been sick for quite a long time, and out of that sickness you got tired of being sick and you said, I think let me start seeking God for my healing. Uh, some of you have, you know, issues in your relationships and you're seeking God to reconcile relationships. Some of you, you lost jobs or you're in the middle of jobs or you're frustrated and you're looking back in your life for years and you realize that with all you're doing, you have failed to see root fruit for the seeds that you've planted over the years. And then you say, you know what, let me separate myself for a life of prayer. Some of you in different nations perhaps don't have papers to live in those nations and you think any one point they are going to arrest you and, and, and then ship you back to the nation where you came from. And some of you even thank COVID, God for COVID in a way, because it's the only way you, 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 you have managed to buy time. You even say it in your conversation, I thank God for COVID. Otherwise, I'll be out of this country. I would have been, you know, um, thrown back into my home country. But for whichever reason that you have for prayer, the life of prayer only defines this discipline when we understand the relationship of love with which we have fallen uh, in love with God. Recently I was uh, speaking to a young man who has a very great dream of serving God. I see the zeal and hunger in his life. I see the fire in his bones. And I see that this young man wants to live for something bigger and him greater uh, than his story. And, and I could not help uh, but, but tell him, he asked me a question and he said, um, what is this thing that makes you men of God and some of the people that I really look up to and, and I was honored that he, he he looks to me, he looks up to me, it's not something that I take uh, lightly or something that I take for prestige, but I understand the purpose and responsibility of that. So he said, what is this thing that makes you guys who you are? And I told him that I think the uh, most uh, saddening challenge of our dispensation is that uh, especially the young people, they they were not taught how to pray. They were not taught how to pray. They, they don't understand what it means to pray. They cannot relate with prayer uh, in its degree uh, of relationship. They can't understand the space in which God invites you into a rest. You know, they, they, they don't see the relationship, the love relationship between you know, the, 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 the bride and the groom, you know, I, some of you who have read the Song of Solomon, you know, you see that invitation of, of, of how she, she, she the, the wife is inviting her lover, you know, into the spaces of, 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 of deeper love and relationship and, 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 and what you will read as the kisses of my lover. This, this is a deep relationship, it's a very, very deep relationship. And, and the prayer life people have been given is not a prayer life that is relational. It is transactional. You know, it is, it is, it is just the, provi the thing we provide for because we don't have this or we don't have that or we have the time for it or we don't have the time for it. And, and that's why I said many platforms can stand, but to find an altar that has stood for the past four years and is growing every other day, uh, I, I'm not on this platform, but I guess you will know that, that some, some people, you know, cannot sustain, they cannot keep up uh, with, with, with the commitments of prayer. We can keep up for, with anything, but not the commitment of prayer. But I thank God because that is changing. That is changing. That is changing in our times, uh, no doubt about that. In my days uh, of university campus, 
I told people the story once, I think, or twice, uh, where I, you know, was raised in a good church, had in a Bible uh, teaching church, a Bible-based church, uh, and, and for, for all intents, uh, it had all the basic things that were necessary to grow a person. And uh, I remember uh, during that time I um, attended that church for about 12 years, and, you know, church was simple. You know, we went to uh, prayer, uh, service, it was praise, worship, you know, 30 minutes, and then, you know, they leave, uh, there's a little the program comes and tells us the uh, coming program in the next week, they lead us into the giving, the teacher preaches, or teachers for 45 minutes, and that was in the service, and that ensued for many years until one time I had, there was an overnight in the church, so I said, okay, let me go and attend the overnight and see what happens, and they start singing, 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 and then uh, the preacher comes on, and then when the preacher comes on, uh, they give uh, the, 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 the teacher, the preacher, or teacher, and that overnight preaches for 45 to an hour, and then they sing, sing, and then they put a break while you guys have to go, eat yourself, take a cup of tea, uh, mix and make merry with friends, and then come back, and then another session ensues, and then you, you know you're, you're you're on for some time, and then you you sing and sing and sing, and then again the preacher, uh, one other preacher comes on, and then teaches one time or not two, you pray for 10, 15 minutes, and then again sing, 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 and that was the overnight. So that's the overnight I knew. And then a strange group of friends one time tell me we invite you for our church overnight, of which I was very hesitant to attend for all reasons I knew what happened in church. During that time it was I think in my second year of university, I, I tried to connect to God in a deep way. And um, so these guys we, we go to this overnight. Oh my God. I found young people who pray. I really found young people who pray. And I remember, we, with my old understanding of prayer, I, you know, thought, you know, I think all overnights are the same. It was my, uh, that my first of time to attend over, uh, overnight outside my other church, and then I think I attended only two overnights in my life, except for the overnights that we used to attend that were annual, which we used to sing the whole night anyway. So my fun, really, uh, understanding of overnights was singing, 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 and then the preacher comes on, preaches, then you pray for 13 minutes or 10 or 15, and then you go for breaks. That's all I need. It's what I understood. And so indeed, I go for this overnight. It was 10 a.m., no, 10 p.m., and then I pray. You know, I find guys praying. I'm thinking, huh, okay, this is the usual thing where you pray for 15 minutes, and then the next program is going to come through. Uh, and uh, as, as they, were, they were preaching, as, as they were praying, as, I, I just joined the prayer of young people who were about, perhaps close to about a thousand of us, you know, close to about a thousand of us, or slightly less. And uh, so we pray, we pray, and I'm 45 minutes of prayer, which was longer than I think I had ever prayed then. Uh, uh, oh my God. I prayed for everything. I prayed for my parents, for my best friends my relatives, my uncles, my aunties, my cousins, everybody related to me, and everybody related to those that are related to me. I prayed for my school, I prayed for my, for my, for my, uh, for my nation, I prayed for the continent, I prayed for the world, I prayed for the sick all over the world, I prayed for, for <laughs> I prayed for, 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 for uh, the trouble all over the world, I prayed for the, I prayed for, I prayed for everybody. And after 45 minutes, I had no word. After 45 minutes, I was out of prayer, so I go out and give myself my own, uh, you know, break. And uh, and I went, there was a cafeteria out that's outside the church, so just a couple of people, few people, about uh, 20 of them that were outside drinking some, they were having a cup of tea, so I ordered myself a cup of tea. And so I look at this lady who had gone with, and I'll never forget her name, she was called Naomi. Uh, she had come from the same hostel. And there's another group of young people, and she was going around the church praying. And in my head, I'm like, but what is this woman praying? That, 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 what, is, what is that? Does she have many problems? Is her family so poor? You know, is, does she have an, uh, a terminal illness? What is this thing that is pushing this woman to pray? And so she prays and prays and prays and prays. And guess what? I leave my responsibility of prayer, and I provoke myself to look at this woman in my head asking, how long is she going to take in prayer? I looked at this woman for one hour, two hours, three hours, and I'm seated there, and every other hour of her prayer is inviting me in a conviction of spirit 
telling me that there is something so you, you you might not find it then you might not understand how it goes but there is something wrong with you and you must find it before you leave this altar tonight and so I look through and that's how the whole night goes I figure the whole night I spent the whole night looking at people who are praying and I kept asking myself this question where in the world have I been how does a man sustain this degree of prayer how does a man live and walk in this realm of prayer and guess what many of the young men that i was with during that time and some of which had already attuned to that degree of prayer those were some of the first young men that in my life had seen healing the sick before my very own eyes i knew a guy who prayed who used to pray a couple of nights and and, and one time this guy comes to and he says i'm looking for anybody with a deaf ear and, 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 and he, they bring a girl who has death in the ears and he puts his hand into this girl's ears and speaks in tongues and casts out the death spirit out of this young woman and the girl started hearing. I remember instances of some of these young men who used to carry for two, three days in prayer, you know, and I tell them about intense prayer and by the time they were out of that, uh, you could not come near them. The power of God was simply overwhelming on their lives uh, and... Uh, and uh, and, and, and you could not come near them. I know one guy who, you know, for five or six hours, nobody could touch him. Every time, everybody who came in a radius of five or six meters of him, they were slain out straight by the power of the Holy Spirit. Miracles started happening. We saw people changing things. We go to a level where some young men would go mountains and pray, and by the time they leave that mountain, the anointing is on the place even where they were praying from. And so when I returned back the next week I went back the third week but I was asking God one thing what is that one thing that these people see that keeps them connected and focused to the spirit of prayer because this was more than just people praying because they want to pray there was something that was at work within them that almost as though they had no choice but to pray and not only could I see that but I was also seeing the rest and liberty with which they were carried in prayer. It's one thing for a man to pray under their own effort, and it's another when a man is carried by the Spirit in prayer. And what I could see was that these young men were carried in the Spirit or by the Spirit of prayer. And indeed, that's why the Bible calls him the Spirit of grace and supplication. You cannot get into realms of supplication and prayer when you have not understood the ministry by which you are carried into that articulation. And what I had then was the hunger to get and connect into those realms, those spaces. And and, and one, two weeks, I remember one of those days, uh, I just found myself praying. The power of God overwhelmed me in, in that meeting. And, 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 and to know that I clenched into that realm, I remember somebody tapping me, telling me, it's 5 a.m., let us go home. And between that 11 or 10 p.m. into the 5 a.m., believe you me, I don't remember consciously much what was happening in the physical realm, but I remember every ounce of experience that happened to me in that spirit, in the spirit realm. I remember the things that ensued and transpired, the things God spoke to me so immensely and mightily. And when I connected into that realm, I desired no other place to be with God except in that place. And that is why I said that this is the place where you understand the love relationship with God. There is more than just the things your lover tells you, but the things that you can tell your lover as well, the things that two hearts can communicate that, that have no connection with a human mind that cannot calculate time and space anymore because you, you have transcended beyond the elements you have transcended beyond human effort you have transcended beyond human mind the human mind you have transcended uh, beyond the plans that you have and all you have is that particular moment with god and that is I believe the pain that I have with our generation because there are people who have lived, served, have callings, have even been approved in Bible schools, and, and they have gone on to build ministry, but they have never really been intimate with God in prayer. The altar on their lives is, 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 is just something that fans in flame when only they need and need, and those flames burn what must be burnt and meet what, what is supposed to be met, but they are not sufficient to sustain a certain glory. They are not sufficient to sustain these men in particular realms. They are not a 
sufficient to be available for the work of the Spirit when a miracle is demanded, when a sign is demanded, when a wonder is demanded. And, 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 and people cannot consistently keep a charged life. And let me tell you this, child of God. Some people think it's enough for God to speak to you about a thing and promise and, and prophesy on your life concerning your future. But I tell you, when a man's spirit is not disciplined, it doesn't matter how many voices you hear from God. It doesn't matter how many instructions are sealed on your heart from God. It does not matter how many visions and dreams you will have. It doesn't matter whether you're seeing angels in your room or the Apostle Paul himself appear to you. It does not matter how many experiences and visitations you have had with the Christ. If that is not, you know, uh, submitted to the realm of relationship, nothing in your life, nothing in your life will, will show the evidence of a man or a woman who saw the Lord. And... Uh, because there was no response, there was no respect, you know, to the spaces God had invited you to. And so when I hear people speak about prayer, it's a very passionate space in my life. It's a very private place in my life because for me it defines the relationship that I have with God. It, 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 it's the expression of love. You know, you cannot say you love someone that you cannot be you know, one with, that you cannot fellowship with, that you cannot lead with, you know, that you cannot share with. It, it's just not possible. There is, there is no expression of love there. In, in any aspect of love, I think the most uh, uh, blooming uh, entity is, is the space uh, where people are able to communicate uh, things that human language or, 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 or human words or the words of union cannot bring uh, to articulation. It, it's, it's a very big place. It's, it's a place of burning. It's a place of brokenness. It's a place of a relationship that only you and your God can have. That is why even when we come to, to fellowship, we don't come to fellowship. Uh, in fact, the true place of fellowship is a place where fires are invited, individual fires are invited, and then join together. Uh, as each man brings their spaces of revelation with God. It's not a place where you just come to receive a word, one man's fire, one sister's fire without your own, you know, uh, contributing some. That's what the Bible says, when you gather, let him with a psalm, a hymn, a song, a word, bring all to the glory of God and being done in the honor of the, on the order and honor of the Spirit. But what is God really telling us? He's saying that the place of prayer, if you're saying you have a prayer line, this is a place that is supposed to invite men or women that have been eliminated and ignited by this relationship of spirit. And when they come together, they form something. It's the fervency of the spirit. And, uh, the Bible speaks of Apollos, how he was fervent in the spirit. And what does it mean to be fervent in the spirit? It means to, 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 to carry the holiest emotion in relationship with God, to carry that intense sincerity of the spirit with God, to carry that, 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 that fire that is extreme, extremely attached with the feeling of the heart and comfort of the spirit in your relationship with God. And, 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 and I'm telling you this because you have, and, and listen to me, listen twice if you have to, you have to cultivate a life of prayer. And not just a life of prayer, but a disciplined life of prayer. And what do I mean by a disciplined life of prayer? It's not disciplined enough if it's not invited by love. Okay? If you want to call discipline, then it's just routine. It, 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 it's not a discipline. It, it, it's just, that's just you being under the law. That's just, just you being legal, you know. But when we are invited by grace and carried by grace, this, this discipline is, is effortless. It's effortless, but yet it's evident. It's there. It's there that you have your moments with God, that, that you will come together in union, together with fellowship with men. You're not just sharing the word, but this word is leading you to something bigger. And that is why those of you who have really attended this prayer line for quite some time, it is the thing that you're going to see over time, that every year, every day, this fire continues to grow. And as it continues to grow, it becomes so a part of you that it is the one thing that you start to feel that you can't do without. Because you, you carry it. There is grace for it. And where grace is, you find that there is time for it. Even in your busiest schedule, you will find that there will always be time to congregate where the two or three gathered in God's name. It doesn't matter how many are on at that particular point. 
So as I say that uh, this is a place that by grace will carry you. So when we meet here, as those of you who are listening, to celebrate four years of funeral prayer line, what does that mean? It means you're celebrating four years of being carried by the grace of God in two realms of fellowship with the Spirit, oneness in the message, reconciliation of God's love, and every year what you should and what we expect that you will see is that you will continue to see the grace of God carrying you through. You will continue seeing the grace of God enabling you to. Some of you are on programs, so you have different timetables on which you turn on. Uh, but it's the four years that you look back and say, hey, in the one or two, three years I've been doing this, I have had the grace for it. Okay? Some of you, you are on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, on, you just attend, you probably don't say anything. You know, you're the, a member that is listening in, you just find yourself listening in, but you don't do much. But again, you will find yourself that you will celebrate these four years or two, three, four, five months you've been on a one year, and all you find is that you, you have found a certain grace that has carried you through this. It's the few words that the teachers on this platform sometimes share before prayer. And those words are what you needed in that time. You know, the, 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 the conversations that you have online uh, to compare and contrast the spiritual with the spiritual. You know, recently I saw uh, somebody, you guys were discussing faith versus grace. You know, which is of importance, which comes in the other order, which comes before the other. You know, and on that platform, I believe you hear everyone's opinion, the, the people you consider right, the ones you consider wrong, the ones you think uh, haven't gotten it yet, the ones you think you can advise. But whichever it is, I thank God that this is a platform that has invited you in love, that you, re, you, you correct yourselves in love, that you instruct each other in love, that you are patient with each other in love, that you are receiving from each other in love, because the most inviting factor of this is the grace of God that sustains you through this. And uh, you find that this, this is the reason why you're still on. But back to the same scripture that I shared today. All things work together for good to them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That our prayers should pour out into finding ourselves in the meaning of our lives and the reason of our existence. Why do I want to finish with that? I say this with all sadness, that some of the young men and women that we prayed with, that we saw gifts uh, of immense demonstration, that we saw, you know, uh, power that, that was unmatchable and unimaginable, many of them ended only by the lamb walking, the blind seeing, the deaf hearing, finding good husbands and wives, building nice houses and, and wonderful businesses. Uh, but with many uh, was the was the loss was a certain loss because even when they sought God in the time they did some of them they were not yet aligned to the power of purpose uh, to understand why uh, they were alive and the meaning of the gifts that were working in their lives the demonstration of power that was working in their lives the same and wonders that was working in their lives and how this was to be connected to the purpose of God and the bigger picture. Many of them never zoomed out. And they are still anointed. Today they still cast out devils today. They are still finer and better than the people that never you know, connected to those realms. By far. They still demonstrate power by far. They still heal the sick by far. They still have working relationships, businesses and careers by far. But but they've not built a certain distinction of spirit. They have not connected to the distinction that, that, that must give meaning to them or, or full satisfaction that they are not only in the perfect will of God concerning their lives, but they are doing what they are supposed to be doing in the time that they many have that dissatisfaction and a sense of being lost, uh, even with the giftings that they carry and the anointings that they can so easily demonstrate when they connect to the fire of the Holy Spirit. But some have not really formed themselves in this bigger uh, conundrum of, of, of the demand of the spirit uh, and, uh, and the hour that we are living in. And, and so what is the moral of the story? The moral of the story is that 
I don't know for whoever is listening and why you're tuned in, or from wherever you're tuning in, or why this day God speaks and is inviting you to whatever he's inviting you to. But by and large, um, I pray that may God help you to understand that this prayer line that you're on is not just a platform for you only to air your opinions about God or to receive from people concerning God, but it is there to invite you to a deeper space of relationship. Uh, but not only uh, uh, this love relationship, uh, to receive the things that you need carnally and the touch the flesh, but that's this love relationship that should build and, and, and define the purpose of God concerning your life, the meaning of your existence and why you are who you are, where you are doing what you are doing, why you're in that nation, why you're married to that person, why you're raising those children, why you're doing that job, why you lost your ministry, why your ministry is working or it's not working, why, you know, to, today a young man sent me uh, a message and I called him and he said that, uh, uh, you know, somewhere in, uh, in, in the west of Uganda, rain is heat. And he is the, the whole ministry, the building where he had the, that he had erected, you know, with the iron sheets and all, was all swept to the ground, totally swept to the ground. And so he called me very disturbed. And, and so I called him back and I said, look, the first mistake you're going to do is to think that you need to fundraise for what is broken. I think what you need to do as a man of God is to firstly ask God, why has this happened? And, 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 and what, are you, what are we to do? Why? You know, because many people are going to judge it. Oh, God was not with you, or this is a proof that God is against you, or or that this is your account, or probably God is judging you for those that this, uh, will not understand or disagree with you in doctrine. And, 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 I, and, I, and I, in my heart, I keep asking myself, in retrospect, what would this young man do if he does not have a certain place with God? Um, one time I told a friend of mine that, one of the greatest things God has given me is that I know how to find him when I need him most. Um, and this you will understand when you are in the most trying times of your life, whether health-wise and ministry-wise, and you're attacked on every side and things are testing you, and you pass up, for example, you wake up tomorrow and your congregation has gone by half. You must know how to find God when you need him most. And, and this is not a trick in a book that I can give you by teaching. This is only a place that you're invited by grace in a certain relationship. And when you're in that relationship praying, you know when he's calling your name, uh, your name distinctively. You know when he's speaking to you things only you, things only you can hear and understand in the language only he can speak to you about. You know, I could speak endlessly about this, uh, but my, my, my heart's uh, prayer really is that God will help whoever is listening to me to have a disciplined life of prayer. To have a disciplined life of prayer. It's all worth it. I want to allow for a few questions, three or four, five, and then I want us to pray for a few minutes and then I'll close this line. Off. Okay. If you have any questions, kindly send them. Gilbert Brave, he has a question. Is asking, is our purpose directly aligned with our gift? Yes, but you must understand the order. That the gifts, uh, the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts that come in your life are there to justify your vindication in the Spirit for you to carry out the purpose for which God has called you. So yes, our purpose is aligned with our giftings, but I would rather say our giftings are aligned to our purpose. Uh, present responsibilities before God. Uh, let me see another question. What's the thin line between consistency, discipline, and routine? Simple. The routine mind is a legal one. It is praying because it must pray. The consistently disciplined by God is, the discipline is, is in the revelation of love. The Bible says he chastises those he loves. Okay? You cannot, you cannot, you can't be, you can't be disciplined or chastised. The word chastised actually is discipline. You can't be chastised in prayer when you don't have the revelation of love. So are you invited by love to pray? Or are you praying because you must pray? King Amile, good to see you. How do you activate the spirit of prayer? Understand God's grace, understand love. The revelation of love and grace invites you uh, to prayer. But two also, I tell people that uh, I, I insist this without uh, any um, apology. 
that it doesn't matter how many gifts are working in your life, you are still lost, you're a wandering star if you have not yet found your gift, your assignment, your, your purpose, the reason why you, you, are, you are on the earth. Uh, Jimmy, I see, what is the place of consciousness in the life of the new creature? Let me answer it this way. Uh, the place of consciousness in the life of the new creature is the place that understands, can hear God in truth. That's the place of our consciousness, the beginning of our consciousness. Uh, it's, 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 it's to hear truth. Are you able to discern truth? You know, I'll give an example. How many people sit in false teaching and they can't discern? You know, that that they are under a false teacher. Or how many people can tell the difference between truth and fallacy? You know, I think I've answered that as the best I know how. How do you know that you found your purpose? Um, that's a good question. Somebody asked, how do you know that? I think that's polling. How do you tell that you have found your purpose? Uh, I'll give you three things. One, if you go to bed happy that you have done a thing for which you don't need to be paid for, then you have found your purpose. Okay, when your satisfaction can be found in a thing that you don't need to be paid for or that you would spend for, then you have found purpose. Uh, you have found purpose. The other thing about finding purpose is that uh, you, 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 you start to become conscious about the life ahead of you. When you hear somebody saying, oh, you know, I have suicidal thoughts, I wish I could die. <laughs> no man who has really found purpose and meaning can actually be suicidal. The meaning of finding purpose usually casts your vision uh, to the days ahead, to the years ahead, to the future, and you start to see that you align yourself to the planning and purposes uh, of God concerning your life because every other day you are you are equipping your skilling uh, yourself to 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 the work with which God has called you you're looking ahead to every other day and when a man of purpose have, have finished they know they have finished they, 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 they don't they don't ask for more time they don't ask for more time they, because you, you you understand that the thing that has compelled you to that purpose is fulfilled and that satisfaction, you, you, you feel it's okay to leave and, and then go to be with the Lord because you know you're finished. Your days on earth are numbered, you know. But also sometimes we understand the power of purpose by the things that we invite, the people that we invite, the things that start coming to you. When a man, but the power of purpose is a very attracting power, you know, it, it is, it is uh, submitted to the law or of attraction in a way that you, you start to attract the things that are um, that, that, that are aligned to your course and, 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 and calling. You know, you start to attract certain people, uh, helpers. Uh, you start to attract people who interpret the dreams of God concerning your life. You, you start to go into effortless spaces where you will be served and, 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 and supported because something in the hearts of men and things around you are compelled uh, to explore with you, to discover with you, to work with you, to serve with you, to multiply with you, to support you without seeking any praise or glory to them because something invites. Uh, the, 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 the other thing as well uh, about uh, know, how, knowing, how to know that your phone purpose is, is the, 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 the things in you that start to come together and unite. The, the, the spirit of unity becomes a very integral part of your life, both in the uni uniting of things and the uniting of people for a common good. When a man finds purpose, when you, know, when you see people, for example, believers who are fighting each other in church, those are people who are not found purpose, you know, because they don't understand how every joint supplies. Okay, that there might be no schism. The word schism there is division. You know, you, the, the, the hand cannot say to the leg that I don't need you. You appreciate the bigger picture of the unity of the faith and you learn to celebrate every gift and calling in its uniqueness. You don't compete because you know your cause. How do you know you found your purpose and you find that you don't fight or compete with man for anything because you're satisfied in doing what God uh, has called you uh, to do in the mighty name of Jesus. I think I will take one or two more questions. Daphne, the psalmist. Mm, that's, a nice, that's a nice question. As a married couple, should there be a distinct 
time of prayer for husband and wife and then pray together? Yes, 100%. As a couple, you can pray together. You should pray together. I pray with my wife every day. But I have my moments. I have my private moments. Because sometimes we can be together or one in the spaces of marriage and the companionship uh, of that responsibility. But sometimes we are we have different uh, different convictions pertaining that hour because whether I want it or not, I'm one with my wife. But the, the, the vision I have and the assignment of a helper, they, they, they sometimes they have some you know differences of conviction, although they are one. And and because of that, we find that sometimes we could be in different spaces in the spirit realm. And so I tell people, yes, husband and wife should pair together. But you must have your one personal moment alone as a man or a woman to seek yourself, uh, God. That, that, that is important. Otherwise, some of you will only ride on other people's graces, but without another person's prayer, you can't uh, do it. Somebody saying, if husband and wife are submitted in different ministries, how then do you reconcile purpose as a couple? Okay, I'll answer that. Firstly, it's not good for, you know, husband and wife to be submitted to different ministries, but it has been a space that I've had times without number happen under certain circumstances. What the mistake we do as a church is we are quick to judge. We are very quick to judge that without firstly understanding. And so I will leave it to the uniqueness of the story per couple. Because I know couples who worship uh, differently, uh, but they, it's a mutual agreement. They agree with each other. I know couples who worship differently because one is lost and one is not. I know couples who worship differently because just one is rebellious of the other. Uh, so <laughs> that's a sad one, but it happens and it is sad. Uh, and if you are in that state, I tell you, pray for your partner, that you might see one, if indeed what you see is the right light, or be humble to tell God that if I don't see things the way uh, my partner sees them, at least give me the grace to see if I'm wrong in one area or if my partner is wrong in the other area, give them the grace to see without rubbing and fighting each other. Uh, but by and large, when they go to different ministries, at least you must keep this one thing, you must pray together. Kidlin Grace Love UK, the meaning of five dreams where Apostle keeps inviting you to a fancy dinner, a banquet to sit at this table. When you dream of a man of God inviting you to a banquet, uh, uh, Kidlin, uh, the, the, the God is defining your spaces of fellowship. All right? It means, for example, if you see me invite you this time, it means God is telling you to give more attention to the words that that man is speaking or teaching in that particular season because really us, we feed men by the message. God is saying, take heed, and it comes once, two, three, four times, he's telling you, it seems probably you're not attending as you ought. You know, you must uh, heed and listen and listen because everyone in this world has an instructor. And means by the grace of God, God has instructed you to listen to Apostle Grace, then, uh, then, then listen, listen. I don't know why he's inviting you to that in this particular time. Uh, any other question? Let me see, I'm almost closing. How can one deal with a feeling of pressure and potential toward God and being purpose for their life? Simple. Um, go back to your love relationship with God. You will see that something is there amiss, you know. Something is there amiss is there, you know. Something there is, 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 is missing because you cannot feel frustrated in purpose when you are one with God. It, it, it just doesn't happen that way. But it means there are certain places uh, that you have either have stepped from or are ignorantly not attending to as you ought. And by God awakening you to that cognition, certain importations will reconcile you to the spaces you must be. Let me see. What is the problem if you continue to pray more but still have negative evil dreams? Faith. 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 What, what are you listening to? Or how are you giving yourself... Uh, to, the, to, to the things that you sh are supposed to listen to. Okay, how do you experience the love of God when you have never experienced it with this around you or even your family? That's the problem. You're this. It's because you are seeking love from men and that's why you will never experience the love of God. God loves more than any man could ever love and if you seek for love in the wrong places, you will get a very wrong definition of love. 
God is love. He just, he just doesn't love. Um, but He is love. Okay, He is love. And they that do not love, the Bible says, do not know God. Hallelujah. Let me pray with you right now. Father, we thank you for Panero Diaspora Prayer Line for years. I thank you for the people that are listening in now. Thank you for the four years. Thank you for the great days that are ahead of us. Thank you for the assignments that you've placed on each man for the purposes for which you've called every man. And you have promised us that you are with us all through. We, we sense your presence tangibly. We thank you for your word of God. We thank you for the possibilities that you have revealed through your word. For the things that now we do inventory and can count our blessings one by one and know that we are delivered for good. I thank you for every man and woman that is listening to me. I thank you because this is a great season of fresh anointing on their lives, a new season of sufficiency in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you because great things are aligned, strength and power are their portion today. I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ because whatever has been opposing you is opposed today. I proclaim the God, the favor of God upon your life, unprecedented opportunities to open up to you in the name of Jesus. I decree that a great harvest is on your way. I thank God for the heart that is aligning in you in the name of Jesus. I decree that you're speaking to nations and that your relationship uh, with God is going to become more and more contagious even as men and women listen to you and draw life from you in the name of Jesus that every form of grace is coming up for you this year that you're going to be fruitful and multiplying that you're going to progress and succeed in the name of Jesus that you're going to walk through troops and bond high fences in the name of Jesus that the favor of God is going to go around everything touching your life touching your story in the name of Jesus that the instruction of God is going to become more and more specific in your life in the name of Jesus that such a season is going to be as prophetic more than prophetic for you in the name of Jesus that you're going to speak to things and that they're going to change for your sake to the glory of God that you find God in this season that even though there's a casting down for you there's going to be a rising up in the name of Jesus that great gifts are going to flow out of you in the name of Jesus that God completes you in the name of Jesus that God grants everything that you need that your springs are going to flow providing revelation providing vision providing money providing businesses providing innovations providing solutions for the world that you are an answer for peace that you are an answer for power you are an answer for prosperity you are an answer for the presence of God in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree that you enter a perfect rest this year and the years to come that great days are yours for your family, for your relationships, for your businesses, for your ministries individually. If you're a parent right now, claim the lives of your children, mention them by name and in the name of Jesus Christ in this grace and glory. I feel that there's a grace that is elevating children. There's a grace that is elevating seed. There's a grace that is elevating anything that came out of you in the name of Jesus. That they're not going to be champions only, but they're going to be ahead and a force in the name of Jesus that death shall be far away from them, that failure shall be far away from them, that sickness shall be far away from them, that fear shall be far away from them in the name of Jesus, that your children increase with greatness, that your children are influential in the name of Jesus, that in this present age they shall be the answer, they shall be the portion of, 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 of excitement in the name of Jesus. I decree that faith comes to you more than ever before. I decree and I declare that things are working on your behalf and God releases a life on you like never before. I thank God that He has had our prayer. I thank God for the next year that are coming ahead. I thank God uh, for the fifth year that you went. I thank God for your lives, each one of you. I am so blessed that we are alive in this time. Uh, to celebrate this life with you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and believed. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 
1-800-242-4291 or email us at scenariocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.scenario.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.